Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our 5-minute review playlist and our nephrology playlist. In the last video, we talked about rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, a nephritic syndrome. And I told you that there are many pathologies that can cause RPGN. One of these is good pasture syndrome, also known as anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody disease. And just like we have two faces here, we have two problems in good pasture syndrome. Problem number one, hemoptysis. Problem number two, hematuria. I'm coughing up blood. I am peeing blood. This is my five minute review playlist. Please watch these videos in order, especially the ones about nephrology. A normal kidney should not let protein in the urine, should not let blood in the urine. A kidney with nephrotic syndrome will let protein in the urine, called proteinuria. A kidney with nephritic syndrome, like good pasture syndrome, will let blood in the urine. We call this hematuria. The nephrotic diseases were discussed before. Just remember we have high protein in the urine, low protein in the blood, and that's why oncotic pressure decreases and I get edema. Kidney disease, heart disease, liver disease, all of them can cause edema. But the edema of kidney disease usually have periorbital edema. The edema of CHF and cirrhosis usually does not. Anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody disease is a nephritic syndrome. Itis means inflammation. Your kidney is injured and it's shedding tears of blood into the urine. Nephrotic syndromes had four features. High protein in my urea low protein in my emia, edema, and hyperlipidemia. On the other hand, nephritic syndromes have seven features. The most important two are hypertension, hematuria. But these are not the only two because we have seven. We have hypertension, hematuria, jugular venous distension, oliguria, mild edema, and proteinuria, elevated bioinon creatinine, hashtag azotemia. Acute kidney failure, which can later become chronic kidney failure or chronic kidney disease, eventually end-stage renal disease. And then you only have one of two options. Number one, dialysis. Number two, transplant. Nephritic syndrome, itis inflammation, the kidney is bleeding. How do I know that the blood is coming from the kidney? You will see red blood cell casts and dysmorphic red blood cells in the urine, proving to you that it is the kidney's fault, not the ureters, not the bladder, not the urethra. It is coming from the kidney. Glomeruli are hypercellular and inflamed, and in case of good pasture, you can even see the crescent because it's a rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. If you lose a lot of blood, you can get anemia. There is limited proteinuria, lower than nephrotic syndrome. There is renal azotemia or failure. What are the azotes? Nitrogen compounds. <gasps> BUN and creatinine, yeah, blood, urea, nitrogen. When the kidney is toast, you get oliguria. This is the fifth vital sign in the hospital. If the kidney cannot get rid of salt and water, you get salt water retention, hypertension, jugular venous distension, etc. In some cases, you see immune complex deposition. Hey, medicosis, my urine looks red. Does that mean that there's blood? Maybe, maybe not. It could be just a pigment, not blood. It could be myoglobin, not blood. It could be hemoglobin, or it could be red blood cells. These are not the same. How do I tell the difference? Microscope. Microscope will tell you these are actual red blood cells, not myoglobin, not hemoglobin, and not pigment. Nephritic syndrome is here. You have to have positive dipstick and a positive red blood cell presence under the microscope. The dipstick is really stupid and vitamin C can interfere with test results. How do I know that blood is coming from the kidney? Dysmorphic red blood cells, red blood cell casts. After establishing that it's the kidney's fault, now which part of the kidney is involved? Is it a problem with the glomeruli or with the tubules? And to understand this, you can order a beta-2 microglobulin. I have a separate video about this topic in my labs playlist. If you remember post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, it was also a nephritic syndrome. In acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, we saw subepithelial humps because of the deposits. Do we see anything like this in good pasture? The answer is no. Good pasture has a different kind of pathology. It has antibodies attacking the glomerular basement membrane. To see those antibodies, you need immunofluorescence techniques. 
Nephrotic syndromes include minimal change disease, focal segmental, glomerulus gross membranous, diabetic amyloid. Nephritic is acute post streptococcal crescentric glomerulonephritis, IgA nephropathy, Alport syndrome. Today we are talking about good pasture syndrome, which is here. Your blood contains plasma, including plasma proteins and red blood cells. If your kidney is losing plasma proteins, it's nephrotic syndrome. If your kidney is losing red blood cells, it's nephritic syndrome. What's the problem in good pasture syndrome? The problem is you have autoantibodies. What do you mean by that? I mean they are antibodies, but they are not attacking foreign antigens. They are attacking your own cells. Really? Yeah. Which part here? You see this glomerular basement membrane? it will be hammered by those antibodies. It will not cause deposits under electron microscope, but if you do immunofluorescence, you will see those antibodies attacking the glomerular basement membrane. Why did they choose to attack the glomerular basement membrane? Because it has type four collagen. And if you remember, type four is in the floor. What do you mean by the floor? The basement membrane. Because it is the floor on top of which the endothelium is standing from one side and the epithelium is standing from the other side. In acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, if I get kidney biopsy, I put your kidney under the electron microscope, I would see subepithelial humps, humpy pumpy deposits. Will I see deposits on electron microscopy of good pasture? The answer is no. To see a positive result in good pasture, you do not need electron microscopy. You need immunofluorescence. That's a difference. And if I do immunofluorescence in good pasture syndrome, I will see linear pattern of antibodies on my glomerular basement membrane. Here's the glomerular basement membrane. Here is the endothelium. Here is the epithelium. Which part is hammered by good pasture? The basement membrane of the glomeruli and the basement membrane of your alveoli. Why the basement membrane? type for collagen. Remember when we said before that collagen is a protein in the extracellular matrix and it has many subtypes. Type 1 collagen is in bone. Type 2 is in cartilage, I mean cartilage. Type 3 is very flexible, which means blood vessels. Type 4 is under the floor, which means basement membrane, including glomeruli, alveoli, or any kind of basement membrane. Type 5 is in hair, placenta, etc. Next, if you recall my rheumatology videos, we talked about the human leukocytic antigen, aka major histocompatibility complex. And in my physiology playlist or my immunology playlist, I've told you that the antigen presenting cell presents the antigen to the lymphocyte. But how do they present the antigen? They present it on a tray. Who's the tray? major histocompatibility complex. Who is the customer? Lymphocytes. We're presenting the food, antigen, to the customer, lymphocyte. And who is the waiter? Antigen presenting cell. Like what? Macrophage, B lymphocytes, Langerhan cell, dendritic cells, etc. And you remember that we had two types of MHC. MHC1, present in all nucleated cells, which excludes red blood cells, of course. And MHC class 2, which is present on the surface of antigen-presenting cells. But if you want to be really technical, you have to understand that we have two types of lymphocytes, CD4 and CD8. Usually CD4 interacts with MHC2, and CD8 interacts with MHC class 1, so that the product of them is always 8. 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 1 is also 8. And this will be important to understand good pasture syndrome, because it's very possible that your own lymphocytes recognized your MHC and started attacking your own kidney and your own lung. Human leukocytic antigens is the human version of major histocompatibility complex. We have talked about this before. Remember, we have three classes. Three is not that important. One or two are super important. Class one, MHC includes HLA, human leukocytic antigen A, B, and C. But class two includes D. And then the D is subdivided into DP, DQ, DR. It's like the EKG. You start with the P wave. Same thing here, D. P first, Q, R. And then the DR is even subdivided into DR2, DR3, DR4. Good pasture syndrome is associated with DR2. HLA, DR2 is part of class 2 MHC. And DR2 was involved in what? Lupus. But not just lupus, it was lupus, multiple sclerosis, autoimmune hepatitis, and good pasture syndrome, if you remember my videos. 
I'll give you a few moments to review the slides that we have discussed before. Here is minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. With each one, I want you to pause and review. Membranous nephropathy, we had deposits under the epithelium. Diabetic nephropathy with the famous nodules. Amyloid nephropathy, Congo red stain, apple green biofringence, primary versus secondary. Diffuse proliferative subendothelial immune complex deposits. How about membranoproliferative? Type 1, subendothelia. Type 2 goes into the membrane, and it's the dense deposit disease under electromicroscopy. But in good pasture syndrome, you will not see deposits under electromicroscopy. But if you do immunofluorescence, the basement membrane is gonna light up. Here is post streptococcal, subepithelial. Now, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, as we have discussed in the last video, has crescent on the glomeruli under the light microscope, and then you do immunofluorescence. If you see linear pattern of antibodies, like this picture right here, it's good pasture syndrome. If you see granular, well, stop and think. Is it subendothelial? Diffuse proliferative or subepithelial acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. What if I see nothing? Think of the vasculitides. Today's topic is good pasture syndrome, also known as anti glomerular basement membrane antibody disease. It can cause rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. In fact, 5% of these patients have good pasture syndrome. More common in males, HLADR2. I have two problems, antibodies against the basement membrane of my alveoli and antibodies against the basement membrane of my glomeruli. Alveoli, glomeruli, causing two sets of symptoms, hemoptysis and hematuria, coughing up blood, urinating blood. Two pathologies, two symptoms, two plus two is four. Collagen type 4 is being destroyed by those nasty autoantibodies. Light microscopy. If you look at the urine under the microscope, dysmorphic red blood cells, red blood cell cast. If you look at the kidney under the light microscope, you'll see the crescents. How about electron microscopy? Well, yes, you have antigen antibody reaction, but this is not so big to cause a deposit to be seen. So usually you will not see dense deposits. There is nothing sub endothelia, sub epithelia, you do not see this. But if you do immunofluorescence, oh, the basement membrane will light up like this in a linear fashion. Wow, bro, look at this. The basement membrane is lit said the hilarious pathologist. Tell me about the disease progression, hemoptysis first, and then hematuria. Before you know it, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, then chronic kidney disease, then end stage renal disease. How do I treat? You try to manage the symptoms and you try to prevent progression by doing the following. One, immunosuppressive therapy, such as corticosteroids, cyclophosphamide, and many others. Since these are autoantibodies, you can try plasma exchange or plasma pharesis. Take that bad plasma from the patient and give the patient new plasma that do not contain the autoantibodies. Or take the patient's plasma, wash it so that it does not contain the antibodies anymore, and give the patient's plasma back to him. When everything hits the fan, you only have one of two options, dialysis or kidney transplant. Clinical pearls for the pros. There is a syndrome called Alport syndrome, nephritic. We'll talk about it later. It causes chronic kidney failure. These patients might receive new kidneys. Okay, kidney transplant. And then what? These recipients, these patients might develop and form newly formed antibodies against the glomerular basement membrane. Oh, of the new kidney. Wow, and this is secondary good pasture syndrome. They were not born with these antibodies. They form these antibodies in response to the introduction of a new organ to their own bodies. Another pearl, can you mention some nephrology slash urology diseases that are male dominant? Sure, Alpert syndrome, good pasture syndrome, and posterior urethral valves. One of the most common causes of reflux, hydronephrosis, and kidney failure in children. Now, the next segment is a personal rant based on my own stupid butt opinion, not scientific facts. 
Listen, my friend, just because a disease is male predominant doesn't necessarily mean that it cannot affect females. In fact, if you have decided a priori that this patient is a female, therefore she does not have any of these, you made a big mistake. Because this lady could have the worst good pastor syndrome that you're going to see in your life. There is a difference between epidemiological data in a country versus individual flesh and blood human beings. Once the patient has entered your office, the patient is no longer a random sample. You cannot just say, oh, this disease is more common than men, and this is a lady, she does not have the disease. Shut up. Is it true that rheumatoid arthritis is more common in women than men? Yes, it's true. But a male patient came to your office. If you decided, oh, it's a male, therefore cannot have rheumatoid, you made a grave mistake. This dude might have a very bad rheumatoid arthritis and you will miss if you have decided beforehand. If you don't believe me, consider listening to freaking Hippocrates. I will prescribe regimen for the good of my patients according to my ability and my judgments. Notice Hippocrates did not say for the good of society. He said for the good of my individual patients, according to my ability and my judgment, not according to some stupid guidelines written by third party observers who pay no price for being wrong. It has been my personal experience that the best doctor that I've seen in real life with my own eyes could not give a rip about guidelines. He told me, Medicosis, listen to me carefully, son. The only thing guidelines are good for is to protect your gluteus maximus in court in front of the judge. Your honor, I have followed the guidelines to the teeth. My procedure was in accordance to industry standard. Okay, not guilty. Other than that, medicosis guidelines are really dumb. Medicine is not just a science, it's also an art an art that takes decades to master. It's not just about academic knowledge, it's about mundane day-to-day -day knowledge that you cannot just summarize from a stupid algorithm. Always remember that diseases do not necessarily fit precisely into authoritatively defined pigeonholes. Speaking of pigeons, quiz time! Can you help me diagnose these three patients? First patient, immunosuppressed, exposure to pigeons. Before you know it, nuca rigidity, fever, photophobia, positive Brzezinski and Koenig sign. What's the diagnosis? Second patient, pigeon chest, craniotabes, Harrison sulcus, Gino verum. This is a child. What's the diagnosis? Third patient, pigeon chest, aortic regurge, lens subluxation, arachnodactyly. What's the most likely diagnosis? Let me know the answers in the comment section. You will find the correct answers in subsequent videos. Here are the stages of chronic renal failure. Pause and review. And here is nephritic syndrome in a nutshell. If you love this video, you will adore my renal physiology course, my antibiotics course, my acid base imbalance course, and many other courses that you can download today on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com. Use discount code pancreas to get a 30% discount. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.